uh, play of the game from way down. One, two, silence. Down. Rainer getting absolutely a team wipe. The living bombs going. Oh my goodness, the ring. Bob says they go gonna find Rainer. Finder keeps Maya up. It was gonna be a close thing. And he was what? Get out of no! No! Triple stun again. Big flanks coming out from the uh, blaze. It's a death metal though. Death metal into oh, the double my. triple kill. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to the NGS Rewind. The Sunday afternoon Nexus Gaming Series show where we catch up on some of the matches that didn't get cast earlier in the week. I'm your host, Arrow, and I am joined today with my good friend, Rui Psychic. Hi, everyone. We're doing another one. We've got one more uh, for you, Rec, and then we're going to let okay. you get back to the rest of your day. Uh, and this game is going to be coming at you from Sea East. It's going to be Boogan Squad versus Calculated Throw. And Calculated Ooh. Throw was uh, Div C last season. Uh, Boogan Squad was a Div D team last season that uh, got bumped up into Div C. So much like the last game that we just watched between Jailbait and Rush B. Yeah, um, I remember Boogan Squad. They won their division, did they not? Am I making that up? They out? did. Yep, they yeah, were the grand friends. champions out of Division D. Oh, something we have in common. Indeed it is. <laughs> so let's take a look at the maps here that we've got for this game. We've got uh, Boogan Squad banning out Dragonshire and Volskaya Foundry, with Calculated Throw banning out uh, Tomb of the Spider Queen and Battlefield of Eternity. And our map that we're going to see is Braxis Holdout. And this game took place on the 7th, so I believe this is... Yeah, this is the new version of Braxis. <laughs> Correct. This is a family-friendly stream. Oh, I'm so excited. We get to see Braxis. Oh, man, I haven't seen Braxis yet. This is going to be really fun. I, I can tell. Well, I'm ready to go. You ready? I'm ready. I'm ready All for right. Brax. Let's and check I want to see out. something fun. I want to see a fun. I don't think you're going to see anything too crazy out of the uh, heroes. Okay. But we'll see. Yeah, eh, this looks pretty stupid. Well, you know what? We haven't seen a Tychus in a while. That's true. We haven't. Um, hmm, Let me look at these comps. Who do I like? Who do I like? Kind of like... Hmm. Well, I'll so, say this. I, uh -oh. I like the I like the Rexar pickup for Gre like on Gre grievance for Rexar pickup. Blah, 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 blah. Um, for calculated throw, but the rest of Ugin Squad I like. So I don't know. I, I like them both. I like both. once again. I like them both. I like both. Do I have them right? No, they're not right. Ah, oh, they flipped. Dang it. You can press the P key to pause <sighs> any time. Do you want me to introduce teams while things are happening? I just, yeah, I just flipped it. So, yeah, why don't you go ahead and introduce? Pick one. Oh, I want to introduce Calculated Throw. So, Calculated Throw, your friendly Div C players. Grievant will be playing Rexar. <laughs> Jurgen Derb will be playing Foth. Scooterman will be playing ETC. Mystic on Stuki, Stukav. And Mona Derp on Rainer. And for Boogan Squad, we've got Michael on Johanna. Uh, Tom Peace is going to be on Anduin. Camp Bella's on Tychus. Mantis running around down below on the Jaina. And Imperius is going to be played by Bummernaut. Very cool, very cool. So Tychus getting in there with his minigun. And Scooterman charging forward into the team. Trying to establish that early first blood. But doesn't quite allow himself to die that quickly. No, not at all. Um, he's got healing from Stukov that uh, lasts quite a while. I actually want to see Stukov pick up um, Biotic Armor at level four. That'd be pretty cool to help with those uh, Tychus autos, although they won't help too, too much. Speaking of Tychus, he's getting real low from all sorts of sources, 
and dies as a result of Jimmy and Kalefoss's damage. Well played. Indeed. And so first blood coming in just a little bit past the one minute mark. And as we all know, first blood means that you win the game. Yeah, it's just statistically proven that 100% of the time you first blood, you win. So great. Good job, guys. On to the next one. All right. So important to note here that the new Braxis control points act yep. the same as the Dragonshire control points. Yep. I, I got to say I like that better. Braxis is good again, everybody. Hooray. And that makes it so that a hero like Rexar, where you can keep Misha on the point, can provide so much value. It means that once they get the control point, they can hold on to it and get that percentage. In fact, in a lot of ways, it's better than the control points uh, than on Dragonshire because you get value. Whereas yeah. Dragonshire, you still have to complete the channel. On this map, you get value if you hold that uh, percentage for longer. Yeah, no, uh, I, I, Rex has always been kind of a niche pick here, and now that he's actually, like, pretty decent, um, it makes more sense to pick something like him here. Um, you gotta be careful, though, because he can easily be countered by things like Malfail, and, uh, another character whose name escapes me for some reason. Chen, um, Thrall. Yeah, th Thrall, thank you, it was Thrall. Um, yeah, characters like those who can poke the bear very easily uh, and starve Rex our mana. You gotta be careful with those, but uh, you're actually gonna see a rotation from Tychus to help finish off the uh, hunter there. I'm so, not even sure uh, that they needed that though, because no, uh, he was a he, he went the wrong direction. I think there. Yeah, perhaps. I, and even the point isn't necessarily to kill him; it's to back him off. Um, but here comes Tychus again with lots of DMEs ready for his friends to uh, capitalize on. He took in the rhythm at four, so his uh, minigun will be uh, a lot more plentiful, if you would. I like in the rhythm. It's a it's a fun talent, yeah. and you know what? It's the best way to hear. Ba-ding, 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 ba-ding. Yeah, it's a good one. Like, what other, what other hero has a quest that's so good like that? I've literally sat in try mode, auto-attacking the dummies for like an hour, just so I could see how long I could get minigun up. It, and I've got it to like two minutes of uptime. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, Rec, we need to have a conversation. Yeah, we really do. I, I don't do a lot in my spare time, but Tyka's getting really low again. Gets saved by the leap of faith from Tom Peace on Anduin. Uh, but uh, not, not a whole lot of else going on there. You know, Another. the other thing <laughs> that I've seen a lot of lately is is the leap of faith onto a living bomb target. You have yeah. to be really yeah. careful. You gotta be careful. Or, uh, you know what else I've seen? Arrow, <clears throat> uh, uh, well, maybe a dead Anduin here. That's one thing, but no. Uh, actually, that's not Anduin. That is a topless Tychus, but no, you know, what else like Sierra is a lot of Muradins leaping after I leap of faith them. Hmm. Mm. Mm. I'm not sure what you're trying to say, Rec. Oh, nothing. But I am trying to say that the Zerg wave are complete, wa waves rather, are complete for both sides. Uh, calculated <laughs> throw with the bigger one. Look at this um, minimum Zerg wave at the top. It's It was literally a small group of the little ones with one Baneling and one uh, <laughs> one melee guy. I love getting like 2% on them. <laughs> like you just get that one more Zerg. <laughs> like, oh, okay. <laughs> Michael going in deep into the Zerg here and taking a lot of damage for it. And keep in mind now that they do, they bring in additional minions. So the longer the bigger ones are up, the more minions they can provide now. And they don't have durations. So in theory, if you just never did anything, they could go forever. Yeah, I mean, uh, what would exactly happen with them too? They got buffed in some way and nerfed in another. I think they deal more damage, but they die quicker. Am I making that up? So they scale more, but they they uh, brought down the damage and he and health. So like oh, an early right Zerg there. wave is gonna be you know lower damage, lower health, easier okay. to clear, do less you know to your structures. Um, but as we're seeing right now, if you've got a team comp built for it, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Although look at how quickly those three died once they actually got forward onto them. I mean, 
Rexar sending Misha up to get that globe. Mm, did he take the... Did he take take yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Of course he did. You'll love to see it. Um, sitting at 11 globes now, so he's getting nice and healthy. Tychus getting a little bit over a half a second on that in the rhythm now. Yeah, nice. I mean, that's good stuff. Um, you almost want to see Tychus, like, sharing a lane with Rexar, just so he can build those stacks. Stack. Yeah, I know. You will almost want to see it, but you're also going to want to see this Imperius wow. almost die. Scooterman missing his power slide by a hair because Bummer not decided to uh, press his Q key just in time. Yeah, so using that Celestial Charge to get out. Yeah. Just barely. Yeah. Good job. But uh, that does free up a lot of space for Calculated Throw to deal a whole lot of structure damage up top. They have a camp there, too, because well, why not? Um, going to be cleared kind of quickly. No, not really that quickly. By Bugen Squad. And Stukov doing the old zoning silence. Mystic. Mr. Mystic. Almost able to get that second tower down. Just I think, about. It, I think Rainer or Kael'thas could finish it. Well, and they are did just yeah. living bomb it from Michael. Michael said, let me help you out there for a sec. But It's nice of him. Yeah. Uh, Let's take of actually, I want to... Oh, uh, he opted for vigorous reuptake at four. I lied. I thought he was going to go for bio armor. But I did just realize that block party was taken at one from mm -hmm. DC. Yeah. So never mind. That's kind of the same thing, more or less. In fact, I think block party's better in this scenario. So, okay, cool. Um, eh? 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 I mean, Tychus, right? I mean, those auto attacks, yeah. that, so you're you're negating what? I mean, what's his... What is his so base attacks, auto attack damage? Not a lot. 74. It's 74 at level 10. That's not that much. Oops. But I don't want to go there. I'll tell you what is much. This ring that's going to pop down on one player and a light bomb that hits two scooterman got a stage dive out he says no more mystic in big trouble though because michael's on his tail and he manages to get out yes wow barely and, and etc didn't just stage dive he exited stage left he went straight <laughs> to the core awesome i kind of wish he just flexed on them and went to their core that would have been more fun. oh my but, god for <laughs> heck <laughs> Uh, Hyperion being used to uh, counter siege this uh, siege <laughs> from Bugen Squad up top. Um, but they have control of both points right now. Mystic desperately trying to cancel the charge. Campbell is saying, nope, get off that point. I want it. But they get it, but not before 64% is given to Bugen Squad. Um, they even get a little bit of their own percentage yeah, because that, Rexar like was able to take the bottom. more Zerg in their favor. Very nice. Just the little ones, though. The little ones, yeah. Light Bomb once again onto two in the back line. Uh, not a whole lot of follow-up for it, though, as ETC was stand and a Phoenix were standing in the way. Um, the Fat Silence coming out, but nothing doing. Everyone's going to just kind of back off each other. So I expect to see Misha coming back onto the point, which she does. Yeah, and it looks like Michael's yeah. doing the same at the top. So this is going to be balanced out. Mm -hmm. Bummer not going to rotate up. Maybe make it a 5v4. That's what they want right now. So the Celestial Charge missing and a uh, massive shove pushing him back into the wall. And so uh, after coming up, he's just going to go ahead and head back down. Because he's now got yeah. a wave to clear with the... Uh, the siege camp going in the bot lane. Yep, he does. And Bummernaut's gonna go ahead and actually step on the point first because they don't have control of top right now. So 64 to 40 in percentages of the beacons um, here on Brax's holdout. Uh, Bummernaut's gonna be brawling with Rexar and Misha a little bit. I think he loses this in the long run, but neither of them doing too, too much damage to each other. Uh, Anduin comes in and says, hey, I know Hearthstone. And that's it. What? <laughs> listen, listen. I've been streaming for, what, three hours now? Two hours? One hour? I don't know. Two hours. Two hours. It's a long day. Let me say things. <laughs> I have no Hearthstone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. 
All right, okay. well, what do we got here? So half of that bottom keep now down thanks to that siege camp. And, of course, Tychus did eventually head back there to get it, but uh, it was a little late. They're trying to chase down Grieven. And Bummernaut needed to get that Celestial Charge. If they could have gotten that charge, I think that Campellas could have sent Grieven packing, but uh, wasn't able to quite line it up, especially no, under the towers. No, and a big fight coming out top here. Uh, Blessed Shield coming out to interrupt Stukov's silence, and a big Ring of Frost coming out too, but it's only going to slow people, no roots. Um, Mantis was saved by the Leap of Faith from Anduin, I believe, and uh, looks like a team fight won by Gugan Squad, two for nothing. And you know, the... <sighs> I don't want to criticize them because they did win the fight, but I feel like their combos, they're not they are not lining them up um, successfully. So, yes, we're seeing the light bombs happen. We're seeing, you know, the uh, Johanna combo. Like, all of that's going out, but they're not lining them up in such a way that, like, have we seen a Ring of Frost he, get any significant value? Yeah, I don't know. It seems like they're not quite on the same page, I suppose. Like, maybe, oh, I've got the stun. Oh, shoot, I'm not in range for my root. Let me throw it out right. kind of thing, you know? Maybe that's what's going on. Uh, and I think 90... that if they can wait just a little bit on the ring, I think they can make that worth. Yeah, Light Bomb's back up, so maybe they can make something happen. Uh, Blessed Shield is up again as well. Ring comes back in 13, so yeah, yeah stuff can happen. And we you were going to talk about the percentages. They're very close at this point. Yeah, they're really close, and very both teams very high, too. Johanna's really low, but she manages to condemn a couple of players together. Kelthos goes down from the Light Bomb. Phoenix was uh, sent out as well from Kelthos, and Mystic's actually in trouble. He's got both Tychus and Imperius following him. Doesn't matter, though, because he doesn't die. Uh, but but uh, I honestly so, didn't even see who technically won that. Well, it was 100 to 98%. So right, technically so the blue team wins that one, but great. look at how much of a Zerg wave there is on the bottom here. And, you know, Rexar is going to be able to, to get some damage in, but he can't really do this by himself quickly no, enough to prevent. Derp, she decides to uh, rotate downward and maybe she pops her Hyperion out. Who knows? But uh, looks like uh, the real talk is the fight going on top side. 4v2, that I don't think they're going to get anything out of it. No. In fact, Michael actually backing off. Hmm. So, ultimately, more value for uh, Calculated Throw, getting that top fort down. Yep. So that Bunch gives them now two. Yeah, like you said, they technically won the beacon. Um, they have some minions on the top four, but that's not really helping Boogan Swap too, too much. It just brought it down maybe from 50% to about 30. Um, yeah, but look at this bottom keep, too. The thing yeah, has almost no health. It's got, what, 1376? Not a whole lot. That's just a couple of abilities, really. Um, honestly, even just a Phoenix probably take it down. But uh, here comes well, another team fight. So we see the bear coming into the back line, getting three stun. Bummernaut gets the charge onto Misha, pops the angelic armaments. There's the root, manages bear. to hit three. And now both sides going down low here. Uh, the pull onto Tyke is not quite enough. So they finally get the root to land, but it's going to be Jaina, Johanna, and Tychus that go down. And yeah. with level 16s now, uh, Calculated Throw is going to get in on this boss as they have all of their people alive and healthy. Yeah, that's a three for half uh, trade in uh, favor of, uh, excuse me, a calculated throw. All they lost was Misha. We talked about that ring, right? It, it landed, but the Stukov silence from Mystic was fantastic. It managed to prevent any real damage from coming out. Um, you know, unfortunately, Bugen Squad, they found their stride in the Ring of Frost, but couldn't do anything with it, unfortunately. So good job, Mystic for uh, preventing any further damage. I'll give you MVP of that team fight. So they do come down and get this keep in the bot lane. We've got a bruiser camp and a boss going in the top. I imagine they get at least the keep wall out of even just the boss with yeah. the uh, towers. I don't think that they get the keep because they do have, no. you know, they have decent enough damage. Yeah, I, I think you're absolutely right here. I mean, this is definitely a wall, but no further than that. In fact, I would just go so far as hmm. to say start disengaging now. It's done. 
Yeah, I would have thought that that would have gotten the second tower, but they did get enough damage to uh, to prevent that from happening. And now they get started on the channel. Yeah, it looks like we've got split focus going on. Some of the players want to walk into the beacon area, but the others are just trying to clear the camp. It's a little bit of a split focus. Michael is kind of allowed to do that, I suppose, since he is Johanna. But not necessarily wanting to split the party. You know, yeah. That's like arrow. And we do see, uh, well, there's the ring again, not hitting anybody. Light bomb going out does hit two in the back there. Phoenix on the opposite side, massive shove onto Michael into the wall, but it's going to be Kael'thas going down first. Tychus pops the Odin, trying to get damage onto, I guess, Misha. Uh, but ETC power sliding in and finishes that. Jane is going to be following very shortly after, so this should be a two for two. I'm sorry, did Jaina just walk one. away? Yeah, she did. She got used her uh, ice block, improved ice block, managed to get healed by Anduin uh, with that uh, bold strategy, uh, flash heal ability. Um, renew, thank you. I couldn't think of the word. Uh, uh oh, Mystic getting flanked here by Mantis on Jaina, and Grievement being followed by the rest of the uh, red team. Mystic actually in deep trouble here. Yeah, there he goes. Jaina actually opted for Northern Exposure as opposed to the Root. So once again, but I'll keep I, my mind is going a mile a minute right now. But I, the Root again from Ring of Frost, right? Didn't connect. I, I think she's popping. They're popping it too early. Mantis they aren't quite waiting for the light bomb to go off. Uh oh. Grieven in trouble, but the stage dive coming out manages to secure the kill onto Johanna and the oh, no. <laughs> the camp. <laughs> Guys, you forgot to grab the camp that you worked so hard on. Uh, looks like they are going to get the Zerg wave, the full Zerg wave, right? No? Not, not quite. 96%. Crazy. And you know what? As powerful as this Zerg wave is coming from uh, Calculated Throw, I think if you are Boogan Squad, you maybe don't want that coming in. So I don't know. I think that they could have looked at, you know, maybe even going somewhere else because there's just so much coming into this and this is going straight into their core now. Yeah. Along with this cruiser camp. Throw, I think you just want to end it. Just end it right now. 19 to, even though it's 19 to 18, you've got so much. You've got a full health um, bruiser camp. And I think, do they have a siege camp still? Mm, I don't think so. No, camp is gone. Never mind. But you got a bruiser camp. You got an entire Zerg wave late game. Uh, all that, you know, Boogan Squad has is a fairly healthy, uh, Zerg Wave, but you know what? That kind of secures it. The Imperious death there. Yeah, and the face melt, uh, manages to prevent that light bomb from landing. The stun's going out into the back line, preventing Boogan Squad from getting any value there. So that's going to be game number one going over to Calculated Throw. Yeah, well done. All right, let me see this. Let me see this. Let's take a look at the talents here. So, uh, looking at these talents, anything that uh, that you like out of that? Yeah, I, I really like the Anduin build. Um, personally, just personally, not really a fan of Speed of the Pious. Uh, I mean, like, like, it's good. It's a good ability. Uh, again, like, all of his 13s are pretty good. <laughs> They're all movement speed based. Um, I like the Glyph of... Um, or the... Not Glyph of Fate, that's the 20, excuse me. The uh, Enchant Boots. I really like that ability, especially, especially if you want to spec into Glyph of Faith, which I generally do if I find myself using Leap of Faith a lot, which Tom Peace on Anduin did do. I think that Tom Peace did a great job on Anduin this game, um, but uh, the the problem, I think, for Bugen Squad was the damage. It was just not there all the time. Uh, the combos were not landing properly, you know? Um, Things like that are kind of what did them in. Yeah. Uh, I think they kind of played themselves, more or less. Um, but uh, no, uh, that's not to undermine Cal throw. A, a Grievant on Rexar did a fantastic job uh, in the solo lane. Um, only really getting ganked, I think, once or twice, but 1.25 deaths. Yeah, no, so only once. I, I lied. Um, yeah, he did. They did a fantastic job on Rexar. So uh, I almost want to say Rexar is my MVP, uh, Reven. Well, Rexar definitely kept him in the game with the XP, yeah. um, kept him moving along, and was able to 
capture and hold those control points quite a bit. Yeah, absolutely. I, I really I think that's exactly uh, the case, and you don't see a whole lot of like MVP solo lane. I guess you don't see that too too often. But I, th I think that the macro play from Grievant and the just general holding and understanding of Rexar uh, is really what helped them win. Um, I really do believe that. So, well done, Grievant. Uh, well done, calculated throw, Bugen Squad. Show us what you got in game two. Well, the next game is going to be Towers of Doom. Cool. And it was picked by Calculated Throat. I remember they liked that map, if I'm not mistaken. And so I swapped those things. Uh, that's right. But I have a feeling that they swapped this game as well. So we'll see. Let's see which side do I have them on blue. So Calculated Throat, blue. All right. Let's hop right into this. We do see uh, a couple of heroes on this one that we don't see often. Not never, but not often. Okay. Okay. So I'm not going to tell you. Uh, so any heroes that you would like to see Diva. on Diva. Towers of Doom? Diva. I want to see Diva. So would you say that you want to see D.Va? Is that, is that what I'm hearing? I want to see D.Va. I don't think you're going to see D.Va, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and get this game started. 1-0 in favor of Calculated Throw right now. Going into game number two. Cool. Let's see what the, what tasty morsels do you guys have for me. Oh, that's not D.Va. Cool Dan, though. Zool. Pretty cool. I'm actually I, I kind of like the Zool. That's fun. Uh, Lily. Mm. Okay. You know, right. the Lily, I'm actually, uh, you know, I don't hate it uh, because you, you've you got the Rainer and the Zool, and that's actually going to, you know, slow down the Zool potential, like, cleave build pretty significantly, too. Yeah, no, you're not wrong. Um, you're not wrong. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, let's get our teams introduced. Why don't you go ahead and start? Sure, I will start with uh, your boys over at Calculated Throw. Mystic, the uh, world record holder of my Mega Man course in Mario Maker, will be playing Stuka. Uh, Jurgen Derb will be playing Gul'dan, Scooterman on Arthas, Grievant on Zool, and Mona Derp will be playing Harainer. And for Boogan Squad, we have Michael on Leoric, Bummernaut on ETC, Tom Peace is going to be playing that, Lily, Cambella's on Junkrat, and Mantis on Jaina again. And look at the damage coming out as Arthas getting booped over and destroyed 20 seconds into this game Bumpers. for First Blood. Junker to do. Always a good character to have. Really good poke on this map. Really good character in general. Does a lot of damage if you can land those Qs. Uh, yeah, I know. That was a well played by uh, Campbellus. So take a look at these talents. Anything that you're seeing here right now that uh, interests you? Um, I agree with Wind Serpent at one for Lili. I like that. Uh, rest of everything else looks pretty standard. Um, I kind of like backlash from Zool too. But yeah, otherwise mm -hmm. pretty standard stuff. Nothing, nothing too surprising here. Yeah, I think that that Wind Serpent is really key at, for them to be able to uh, pause or slow down the damage from Zool yeah. and Rainer. Yeah, I would say so. And we do right. see Lily and Jaina coming up onto the camp, but getting so much damage onto ETC, oh, no. Calculated Throws is going to walk right in. Yeah, uh, Boogan Squad was also operating there pretty awkwardly. They were all positioned all over the place there. Um, but I think, yeah, the real problem there was ETC was far too low to uh, really go back in. Uh, Lily doesn't heal that fast or that quickly, so... It doesn't, you know, it, it's risky, right? It's risky. I, I think the play was either get the camp much earlier or disengage so they chose to disengage <laughs> yeah and i mean they really had to yeah because if no, they didn't really no they didn't that's yeah. Team, like, otherwise. yeah and basically a front bottom four yeah no you you you, you can't do anything about that. you just got to get the camp faster so it looks like uh now calculated throw getting onto their camp bomber not getting rooted 
loads of damage coming in, but able to power slide away. And keep in mind that every time ETC uses an ability, he does get 25 armor, so, you know, he's got to actually do something to get that armor. Yeah, well, it's kind of hard to do that when you're silenced and rooted. Indeed, and thus he has a little bit lower health pool than, you know, some of the other tanks because of that armor, so the Stukov silence really kind of bringing him down. Yeah, a little bit. I'm uh, gonna try and bop Jurgenderb over to uh, Red Seam. <laughs> he wanted to say hello, but Jurgenderb said, no, thank you, I, I'm good. All right, so fighting over the bot altar. Scooterman getting really low from the poke from Junkrat there. The knockback onto Scooterman. ETC, though, getting oh, a no. just melted. Oh. And, and now both teams got their top round, but Leora coming down gets the uh, spooky hand onto Jurgender, but Jurgender getting healed up by uh, Mystic. And now ETC having to once again get away as Junkrat is going to be able to complete the channel and get them another four points. I didn't want to say it too early, but I'm glad I was correct in my brain. Uh, is this good? I was going to say, is it be one of those classic zero death team fights where people just throw their buttons all over the place? And it was. I'm very happy. Yeah, you know what? The funny thing is, the the no death team fights sometimes are the the more fun ones, right? Where everybody yeah, hits everything and everybody lives. Oh, whoops. But uh, not not there. No, that's that's a that's a one death gank, unfortunate. Fight. Unfortunately, I was not even remotely close. Oh, uh, Lily was on caught that. out trying to rotate by uh, four members of Calculated Throw. The four you see at the bottom there. Yeah. Uh, and that's going to be a camp invade. Not a whole lot just Junkrat can do about it. I mean, he could bop them away, I guess, but that only delays the inevitable. Wow. <laughs> huh. That didn't finish off the tower. I'm a little yeah, because the one just got damage on the wall. Hmm. So we do have the cleanse coming out from Lili, and, you know, the important thing to keep in mind with Lili's cleanse, is that called Let's Go? Yeah, let's it go. It is, yeah. So the, the actually, important thing for yeah. that, it's it's the best cleanse in the game, really. It, it, it actually is the best cleanse in the game. It heals, and it's a 45-second cooldown, and it's affected by fast feet. Right. Uh, so. But even faster than that is ETC jumping on Gul'dan and Jaina right behind him to follow up. Mystic might be right behind, and yes, he is. Reven is in the back line trying to make something happen here, but Michael pounding him to death. Look at this. And that's a great time for yeah. Bugenswad to get two deaths. I think, no, three deaths because they got the gold in. So five versus three. We see Junkrat channeling up top. We see Tom Peace working on this bottom one. Is probably going to get stalled? Does. And, uh, of course, they get to work on that camp invade as well. So now the first camp uh, of the game going over for Boogan Squad, but uh -oh, you're going to farm in. Yeah, wow. I, I gotta say, Boogan Squad, uh, with a couple of exceptions here in this match, have been coming out swinging this time. I mean, they've allowed for two camp invades, unfortunately, but they've got one camp of their own. One camp invade of their own, rather. And a really convincing team fight there. Two, taking down Yurgadur twice and uh, Mystic once. So that's pretty good for them. Uh, they're they're kind of really dominating in terms of kills right now. But uh, as far as macro, not a, not that far ahead. Scooterman though, once again getting a little bit uh -oh. caught, uh -oh. booped oh. away again by the Junkrat, and uh -oh. another kill onto Arthas. Yeah, Frostmourne don't hunger too too much apparently. <laughs> So the one thing we have to keep in mind is is that, you know, with the Zool, they can really get some significant push. I'm not sure as the game goes later and he's got the, like, the auto attack haste on his cleave, if uh, Zool will be able to out double soak uh, the Leoric. I think he does. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. I don't see Zool too, too often, but um, I, I would imagine he does. Uh, he clears very quickly, so... Right, Shug. and his ability uh, gets a cooldown reduction every time he hits. So I this... think every time he hits a hero. No, no, no. no it's it anything. Hits. No, it's anything. It's, you're right. It's you're just, right. I like the hero's part is just for his healing. It's the healing. Yeah, that's the seven. My bad. But that so Leoric yeah, prevented an, an entire wave of XP, and level ten is now available for both teams. 
Okay. What's gonna happen here? And then Toon comes out, hits Mona Derp, but uh, Stukov clears it. He uses those flailing swipes to get her out. <laughs> Let's go being used on Mantis to keep him alive, and Michael actually the one not long for this world. Low is Mona Derp again, but ETC is left alone in that fight, and nothing doing there either. Mantis about to get rooted. Blinds coming out from Tom Peace, as well as the Jugs. A disengage from Junkrat keeps everybody alive. Hmm. And that is not how I would have expected that fight to go, because Zuo no. was still in the bot lane. That was a four versus five, and it started off pretty well. They set it up, and uh, but they just didn't get the kills. Not in this fight. Not like the other fights. No. And a lot of that, I think, coming from Jurgender, because his corruption yeah. did no, so much damage right through the line of red health bars that it required that they pull back. Yeah, absolutely. If you looked at Jaina, it was about to die, and let's go. the let's go was actually used to uh, save her there. Um, Uh-oh, look at this. A big, big solo entomb landing onto Zul here, and that's going to go ahead and kill Grievant outright. However, the arrest of Calculated Throw is bottom, and they're going to go ahead and find themselves a keep. Can they do it before the pumpkins get here? Yeah. Two out of three. Well. Yeah. Two out of three. That's pretty good. That's two free points. Unless... Mm, maybe it's no. going to be close. No. Just squad. barely. Tom Peace attracts the attention of the sappers just in time to stop them from going in. Um, Michael picks up uh, the camp top. That'll get a nice tower. Maybe the gate, too. So, yep. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this. Um, I don't really like it. Yeah, I mean, this does give them four points, but I think owning that bottom fort would have allowed them to, you know, fairly easily secure that bottom altar as well, and then they could have gotten the boss. So I don't know, it's... If they get both, then they're still ahead by a few points, but they lost the tower. Yeah, I think if you're also, if you're moving squad here, you kind of want to wait a moment. And they're not even going to be able to interrupt it. So it no. definitely, it definitely was against them. But we do see the fear on the ETC. Here comes the rip tire onto many of the blue health bars. You're gonna drip the lowest root going out onto Lily, but she's got her thousand jugs to keep her health bars high, and she's walking away because they got four more points. Nice. And that's you know what? That's exactly why I mentioned that because if. Uh, you know, if if calculated throw had stayed in this and stayed at that point, kept that keep available, yeah, it's very difficult for Book and Squad to come in and they get those four points, and then the boss is still available. Right. Um, Leo trying to mitigate some damage out there, but man, they weren't looking for a fight anyway, so who cares? And it looks like they'll be able to clear up the pumpkin sappers before they get into the uh, into the tower, but. Did you see that silence come out? Michael taking loads of damage. Rainer's Raider just staying on him there. And Zul kind of hesitant about whether he's coming into this fight or not. Let's zoom out a little bit so we can... Yeah, Zul taking back off, going up to get the soak. Let's see what our XP numbers are like. So Zul a fair bit ahead of Leo. 13, 1300 XP ahead of Leo right now. Yeah. And triple altar phase. Zul already coming in here and, you know, keep in mind that they can see him standing there. <laughs> it's a very small window of vision, but they can see the vision around the, uh, the points. Absolutely. All right. Uh, Boogan Squad's like going to get both, like it looks like. I like it yeah. too. If you're Boogan Squad, this is a great play. You can get the aggressive one up top and, and secure two for sure. Mm -hmm. Quote unquote for sure. Zul trying to stall it up as much as he can with the uh, the Skeletal Mages. Ring of Frost going out doesn't look like it hit anybody though. And, and Grieven is completely isolated in the middle of red health bars. There goes the Leoric and Tomb, but ETC is going to take the death as well. So yeah, a one for his one. mosh pick got interrupted. No, oh, it was a well. I can't tell if it was by Mona Jerk or by Mystic, but um, I'll have to we'll go back and look at that later. Uh, but it was interrupted nonetheless. Uh, I, I saw the the mosh kind of start to come out, but looks like it was uh, Stukov. Okay. I just yeah, I it just popped up. 
Gotcha. Bottom once again in control for calculated throw. Very nice. And but, uh, they really need that because they've only it? got, in a way, two more altars would finish this game against them. And Leo going to get taken out. That's not good. So level 16 is now available for calculated throw. And uh, one more corruption stack for Gul'dan to get the echoed corruption completed at level one there. We see that cleave for Zul as well, and Lucan Squad's coming down here to try to get this fort back. I don't know what, you know, I don't know. Maybe I'm just bitching to bitch, but again, I feel like if Calculated Throw, knowing that Leoric's dead, they could have defended this bottom fort rather than getting the camp. Yeah. I mean, well, they could have done both, right? Like, Arthas could have showed bottom lane or something and just kind of discouraged uh, Boogan Squad from coming in. <laughs> Uh, they could have got the camp and held bottom. I don't know. I, I mean, hindsight is twenty twenty, right? But let's just get into this next fight. Well, level 16s are now available for both teams. Here comes the Ring of Frost. Oh Does land on Stukov this time. Why don't you go ahead and take it, Rick? Sure. Maya, uh, Maya, excuse me. Leoric going in to, uh, to mitigate some damage. And uh, ETC also came in out with a mosh pit. That secured a couple of kills there onto Arthas and Raynor. Um, forcing Jurgender to back off as well. If you notice, the Entomb was used in conjunction with Mosh Pit. And uh, Jaina <laughs> kind of had and uh, cleaned up house there. And as long as we're talking about things that I don't like, uh, I feel like <laughs> the gathering of the uh, altar there... Never mind. The boss just came up, so they can win the game right it's here. It's fine. It's fine. I was going to say, the gathering of that altar, they could have easily just gotten that camp, taken the bottom fort, and then gotten the altar, but uh, they don't need to worry about that. They're just going to rip the boss, and that's game number two going over to Boogan Squad. <laughs> Scooterman was holding out for a hope that uh, <laughs> Kildan would solo save the day, but he didn't have Haunt up, so or Horrify, not Haunt, excuse me. Uh, Haunt so is the level... 20. I think. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. I don't play Gul Daniel. I only say it because I've made the mistake too. So take a look at some of these stats here. So relatively low uh, damage game overall. Mm -hmm. Certainly yeah, lower I than mean, the last game that we saw. That's true. I don't know if Zool worked out for Breathe in time I, I gave him my mvp last game i give him my mvp award this game who do i want to give it to i i mean i know how, who i would give it to i think it might be jaina i if not tom peace tom peace is doing a good job of not dying with the exception of that one rotation that was a little awkward but i think i'll give it to mantis on jaina why not? All right. Well, you can give your MVP award to Mantis. I'm giving mine to Camp Bellas because those concussion mines, splitting okay. the party up and making Artanis, I'm sorry, Arthas go into the back line by himself. And he has no way to get out of anything without just simply walking. And he, he got several kills because of that. And killing the Arthas was high value mm -hmm. in those fights because you have nobody left. What What's Zul going to do? He's going to come in and do his clip and get blinded? Hey. Well, Dog says yes. That's yeah. exactly what it Al agrees with me that that was definitely the MVP call. And, yeah, I, I mean, that's fine and all, but I think Mantis did fine. I think that uh, their damage was always there. Uh, they did opt for Northern Exposure. I think they did a better job in this one on Jaina than they did on uh, in Braxis. Um I think they did a much better job here. So kudos to them for uh picking up i suppose the slack we'll call it and well, uh wreck you know what that means right yeah another game a game three another game where do you think we're gonna go or can you see i don't know if you can see this or not uh well now i have to look because hold on i want to i forget i already forget what the heck um was happening uh i forget what was banned so Oh, well, I can mind. tell you that. Uh, let's yeah, see. Bands were Tomb of the Spider Queen, Battlefield of Eternity, 
Okay. Both Sky of Foundry and Dragonshire. Our first okay. two games were Bra uh, Braxis Holdout and Towers of Doom. This should be an easy answer for you, Rick. Let me Holy. look up who selected this. Holy. First Hollow? This is not Cursed Hollow. No. Uh, the map pick was from Calculated Throw. I agree with you, Al. Hmm. I'll tell you what, why don't I go ahead and pop this up on the screen so that everybody can see with, that we are going to game number three at Infernal Shrines. Oh, darn. That was going to be my next one. <laughs> the, the most popular game or match. Map? Map. There we go. Map in NGS, at least currently. So, you know, you could have just gone with that. I could have, but I chose to say Cursed Hollow. Oh. I was holding out for not Infernal. Oh! Oh! Oh, Wreck! Yo, what's up? Oh! Oh, this is the game! This is the game? This is the game! Don't tell me. Oh, it's not! Don't. It's not! It's even better! It's even better? It's even better. There's I don't even- I don't want to spoil it. Let's just get okay. right into it, okay? Alright. Alright. Ladies and gentlemen, game number three coming at you between Calculated Throw and Boogan Squad. And check hey, this baby me. out. Close my eyes. And I... Oh my god. It could be anything. It could even be a boat. <laughs> oh, but Grievin, it is not a boat. It's a murky. All right, you broke wreck. Like, come on. All right, well, I tell you what, I'm going to introduce uh, the Boogan squad over here. We've got Mantis on Gul'dan, Tom Peace on Ana, Michael on Leora Camp, Bellas is on Junkrat, and Bummernaut on ETC. And for Calculator Throw, Mystic will be playing Ariel, Jurgender will be playing Kelpas again, Scooterman will be playing Johanna, Grievan will be playing Kerrigan, and Mona Derp will be playing Murky. Fun. I don't know, Wreck. Seems a little fishy to me. Don't. Just stop. So, Murky has not selected a talent at level one. Is Murky a bot? Uh, I don't think so. This is good. <laughs> I was uh, kidding. I was kidding. Hello, or good GLHF, or whatever the heck. Whatever Murky's say. Yeah, whatever it is that Murky's say. So, uh, that... Fortunate, I guess? Uh placement from Kerrigan to throw that stun on the ground there. The, uh, what is that called? Impale? I don't even know what that's called. Impale is, uh, Anubarax. I, I think you're correct. Now, hold on a minute. Now, now you got me curious. Yeah. It is Impaling blades. Oh. Is that oh, what it is? Close enough. Impaling blades, yeah. There we go. I was close. I figured it out. I didn't look it up because I... Oh, I guess I could have just flipped over to Kerrigan, but that's okay. So, the other thing, we didn't really, you know, we got so distracted by the, the murky that we didn't talk about the fact that we have an Ariel here. Mm -hmm. So, she did go into that uh, level one for the Breath of Heaven. Uh, I'm sorry, Ray of Heaven, I guess? I thought it was Breath of Heaven. Um, that's now going to do damage to enemies that are nearby. So, yep. kind of no, a No, that's, a good, talent. that's a good talent on this map. I do like it here. Um, it helps out with clear, I suppose. And I, I just as the, in general, the talent's actually pretty decent. Um, going like a full W build, I suppose you can call it, um, is actually pretty nice. So um, yeah, I, I don't hate it. I, I actually like it a lot. Yeah, and that's gonna allow them because it's any enemies. It'll allow them extra damage onto the shrine minions as well. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm mhm. Mm um, I see Murky did opt for the bribe uh, fishy deal. Which is um, the standard, I believe, for Murky. So, that's cool. Uh, we'll help with those uh, macro plays, I suppose. Uh, they're not too hard to get. All you gotta do is destroy some minions with your pufferfish. So, yeah. <laughs> Just reading up on chat here, we've got some, uh, some folks showing up. Missing games earlier, talking about that Rexar ban, and of course... You know, uh, 
Mantis calling out that, uh, you know, some people say, like, you may say tomato and, uh, I say tomato. <laughs> it's tomato, Arrow. But that's not how we read it. No, it's not. But I think that's how he... Oh, never mind. There's an objective to be won here. Michael getting really low against this camp. <laughs> is gonna go ahead and hearth away, and it is a frozen Punisher in the top lane, so not one that you necessarily want to give away early in this game, because these these can very easily lead to uh, a dead fort. Not like <laughs> more certain. powerful than the uh, the other versions when they got buffed. More powerful than the other versions, and more fun than a pillow. Shock em boppers. Look them up. Sure. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Uh, lots of healing coming out from Ana. Very nice. Haha. <laughs> um, but, uh, it's actually 12 to 5 right now. Uh, calculated throw got an early start on this, and, uh, Murky and Leoric are kind of just donking around to their mid and bottom lanes. Ooh! A very nice sleep going out on top of, uh, Johanna, but it is Johanna. What does she care? And, well, she cares a little bit as she's actually getting kind of low and is destroyed by Junkrat's cues. Um, and the slide from ETC also keeping her in place. Grievant was getting pretty dangerous there too, but hops away using that Q from Kerrigan. So good job getting away from all that damage. Yeah, and Mystic was being chased by Camp Bellas there, you know. And once again, the concussion mines really providing significant value uh yep. to you know maybe the mine itself doesn't provide the kill but allowing the team to follow up and secure the kill so we'll see i mean camp bell is you know this game may have taken place a few days ago but camp bell is already sitting there saying you know what i believe arrow believes in me i've got to make this happen yeah i mean listen if you can make it happen anything to see a murky get destroyed so oh Another a fantastic bop from the concussion mine of Campellus to get Kilfoss over the uh, wall and onto the other side, but unfortunately Bugen Squad not quite able to make anything happen with it. Uh, well, there are big roots though, <laughs> so maybe maybe they can. And never. <laughs> <laughs> All right, MVP Punisher. Yeah, MVP Punisher <laughs> so far. Uh, I don't know what the rest of the teams are doing, but hey, I'm gonna give uh, MVP so far to Punisher this time. So they, yeah, they didn't get uh, kills until the Punisher locked them down for it, but they are going to be able to get this uh, fort. Although it is, it is shooting the players now. Yeah. And Murky going to go ahead and pop over here, grab this camp with the fishy deal. Because why not? That's what Murky does. He gets the camps. Oh my goodness. All right, so we've got five versus four in the mid lane here. Murky off doing murky things. Concussion mine just a little bit off there. So they didn't pop it because that would have just sent Kale and Kerrigan behind their own wall. Yeah, that'll do it. So good. You know what? Good control for Campbellas to make sure that uh, they don't just waste the cooldown. Is it Campbellas or Campbellas? chicken noodle soup like never mind i don't know don't, actually don't could answer be. that question it could be i like i was thinking it's campbell but as at the end campbell as oh come on listen the first one campbell as campbell as let's do that all right and there's Fight that the oh, mine onto the point to make sure that if blue does go in, that they'll just boop away. But level 10's coming up. Blessed Shield hitting three, and ETC goes down. Now the Riptire Grieving in danger <laughs> is dead. Also, Kerrigan. Wait, that was Grieving. Grieving is Kerrigan, my man. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so two deaths uh, coming out as Kalefoss and uh, Kerrigan going down. Int for int for camps, int for camps. Everyone knows you int for camps. No, just kidding. The entomb actually was pretty fascinatingly placed. It actually prevented anyone from coming in should they, if they opted to, of course. Uh, it was 
just it was like right in that corner right where they couldn't enter so i kind of liked that in tune there from, uh, my buddy what is your name hold on a moment michael how did i forget that name <laughs> i don't know can't be much easier listen it's been now what two and a half hours oh are you gonna complain again about the time i'm gonna complain about everything arrow you know Guys, so we're also going to complain about an invade from Murky. Calculated throw coming in with the uh, Pyroblast onto Ana. And the uh, stage dive in as well. Power sliding in, trying to get away now as multiple Ooh. solo. Go ahead, Wreck. Uh, there's a big Murloc march coming out from Murky that actually manages to defeat ETC, but the rest of the team from Bo the rest of Boogan Squad rather, <laughs> will seem to be in pretty good shape and cleans up house on both Scooterman on Vo Johan Vohana, yeah, Johanna and Jurgen Durb on Kelpa. So, or not Kelpa, excuse me, uh, Grievant playing Kerrigan. So, wow, uh, a lot of cleaning up there at the end there by the janitor, and. Uh, well, that Horrify was, was mint. That really set was that up. Fantastic. was mint, my man. Uh, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> I see you, Mantis. I see you, Mantis. I'm not, I'm not ignoring you. Game two. Don't worry. Arrow didn't believe. Arrow said someone. But I believed. I forgot to stay on the point. Fair enough. Uh, is it... M bot is that Michael, or is yeah, that? I assume. Uh, I assume that's Michael. Yes. Michael should be. I bet that's Bummer not. Is that Bummer not? I don't know. No, because Bummer not was dead. So never mind. Well, they get the Punisher. This one's gonna be a Mortar Punisher, and here we go. So the solo laners are split off doing their own thing, and look at the damage coming out from Mantis. So far, healthy blue team. They do finish up the Punisher there, and ETC getting the uh, knockback to push Kerrigan away. Once again, Tompi's receiving the value of that Pyro Blast. Oh, by the way, Blessed Shield missed earlier. I forgot to mention that. Yeah, it, that did it went miss. wide. Oh, Here comes the Riptire like looking for the uh, Scooter Man. Unfortunately, doesn't. Yes, oh, but yes. Stage that's dive. why. That's why you take stage drive, Arrow. That's why I like stage drive more than Mosh Pit. You can't do that. You can't flex on people and land on them. That's why I like that ult. That stage dive, securing the kill onto Johanna and Oriel. Wow, bummer not coming in with the clutch play. <laughs> <laughs> you literally landed on. Oh, guess what else is gonna happen? A Yurbander was caught out by Michael on uh, Yaliorik. So bye bye. To oh sh, sh mal Mantis, dude, come on. That's not nice. I mean, it's not a B step, is it? Oh, was it? I just saw the spray. It, oh, it, that was a B step. That was a B step. If the B step was for Murky, then that's okay. <laughs> because murky is stupid but <laughs> and just to clarify monoderp he means not, murky, no, not, not the you player. the player is fine i have no problem against the player it's the stupid murky character Ugh. <laughs> my my lowest win rate or my i lose to murky's pretty regularly screw that character <laughs> grieven is uh in chat where's my this is fine this is Indeed. <laughs> World's on fire around you, but that's okay. We'll be okay. But you know what? I mean, to be fair, this team still, you know, they, they get value as they get uh, higher level, right? I mean, you get the spell power or auto attack bonus out of Ariel. I assume it'll be spell power. Um, even like Murky gains kind of the ability to become unkillable eventually um, yeah. with his healing and, and greater damage at higher levels but here we go go ahead wreck yeah sure michael gets a big old and two month of three or four players there but nothing doing as the rest of boogan squad needs to back off murky is having a field day against this johanna but is peeled away by etc Reven trying her their best to jump onto Campbellus, but is ultimately killed off by junkrat a big stage dive crops out onto kelthos 
it Gul'dan's damage also landing on top of him, and Scooterman's not long for this world either, as ETC slams his guitar up against their faces. And there we go. That's a three, well, I guess technically three and a quarter uh, trade in favor of Boogan Squad for nothing from calculated throw. Well played, guys. And that was a time. really uh, solid pyroblast like on Ana, but she basically negated it by using that uh, healing grenade pretty much immediately after. Yeah, and especially with the level one contact healing, uh, boosting herself up even further depending on how many players are nearby. So yeah, and she moved right into them and got three. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's really cool. Michael got a very fantastic uh, doom on a solo Ariel who said no and whipped him away and walked out. Unfortunately for Ariel, she was uh, negated, her healing was negated by Ana's uh, grenades. So, sorry, Mystic. That was kind of funny, but nothing doing there. So, Arcane Punisher now. We did see ETC come up here to the Shaman Camp. Um, I almost wonder if Bummernaut was thinking that maybe the Shaman Camp was going to go away and was going to try to grab that before uh, uh -huh. the, uh, the Punisher got started, but ultimately they back away and elect to start pushing on this mid fort which i think is or mid keep i guess is exactly Michael, what they should do dicing with death there but instead you find an entomb onto scooterman followed by a haunt or horrify excuse me onto that same player who pops laws of hope and walks away anyway also did get the horrify onto grievant but look at mona derp in the back line just holding three for trading for the the fish life which is I mean, okay, fine, whatever. Like, that... Uh, basically, Murky allowed them to clear that Punisher with minimal loss. Yeah. And that's why I hate that character. He sits on your healer the whole time, a.k.a. me, and the rest of your team tunnels on the rest of their team and doesn't get anything. And then I die. I have well, a lot of Well, they didn't die players. in this case, but... That's okay. Just the fish died. Now they're going to get onto this shaman camp. And they're Thanks. rapidly approaching level 20. They certainly will have it before the next point, which is in the top lane now. And this wall is already down. Only one tower left available. Yeah, looks that way. Are they going to push in? Eh, I don't know if this is the best play right now. but He's looking for an entomb. I don't think so. I think he's looking more to mitigate the damage coming out of Kelfa. He had a living bomb on him, and it is Kelthos that does a lot yeah. of damage. Oh, well, there's the Entomb, and a slide from ETC, which gets bopped away by Ariel. A big fear coming out as well. Uh, Blessed Shield was thrown out, but I don't think it got too much value as ETC manages to stage dive on top of Ariel. Maybe finds himself a Scooter Man? No, but Tom P scales off uh, Murky in the back line once again. Uh, this is looking like a free keep arrow. Indeed, and you know, that Horrify, once again, keeping the Kerrigan out of the fight. So, yes. you know, really making sure that if they are going to get value out of their damage, uh, it's going to have to come from Kael'thas, and Kael'thas is, is a hero that you can mitigate. It's a lot yeah. harder to mitigate the damage coming from Kerrigan. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I forgot what I was going to say, but uh, not quite able to finish the keep there mm, although, oh, don't worry they will <laughs> yeah it looks like they will there, there it goes. goes bye bye so now level 20 available for boogan squad uh we see that upgraded nano boost oh we never even talked about the uh the heroics but uh they do get haunt so now you can say haunt instead of horrify if you want we've got the death metal uh, the buried alive and uh cannonball yeah yeah cannonball uh, you know, interestingly enough, Will of Heaven coming out from Ariel. Um, I guess okay. that's because of the murky? I have I don't no know. idea. Here comes the Riptire looking for Mystic, but just a little bit too early on that explosion as the Crystal Aegis was still going. And uh, the Murlocs just getting tons of value onto Mantis here. Tompies as well, very low from the fish in the back line, and both of them are going to go down. ETC following shortly thereafter, but a four-man death metal 
will allow for at least Junkrat and Leoric to get away as the shrine now coming online. I hate that character, man. I just hate it. Uh, Grievant, you guys were the visiting team, that's correct, but you elected to be on the home team side, I think. Is that correct? Let me look. <laughs> yeah, it looks that way. Yes, that's exactly what happened. So, 89 stacks for uh, Junkrat on his level 4, so in the MVP race right now, I'm feeling like Campbellas is losing a little bit to the, the big Horrify plays coming out from Mantis. Although, I gotta mm -hmm. say, you gotta give it up to, you know, everybody on this team has been playing really well. ETC with the stage dives, the Michael with the uh, Entombs, and now they're just gonna be that much scarier with the Silence, so... We'll see. This is a this is a an even fight between the Bugen Squad members for MVP on their team. Uh, we'll have to see what we get out of uh, calculated throw. They got their work cut out for them for sure. As this Frozen Punisher locking down the fort, and this can be given away. They don't they don't need to die on this hill. No, either not team. at all. All right. So that's the Punisher boy. He's at fifty six percent. He's getting a little hurt. Uh oh. I think that maybe the Wraith Wolf was used a little early there, but that's all right. It doesn't. Uh, as the Punisher boy is going to start to die right around now. There he goes. All right. So they maintain their wall. They maintain at least one tower. It looks like both towers, and they're going to start working on their fort now. I'm sorry, their fort. <laughs> Their shaman camp. They're pretty <laughs> similar. Yeah, they're basically the same thing, right? Right. Pretty close. Kappa? Yeah. Kappa? Yeah. Let's take a look at some of those uh, XP stats again. So Murky, very far ahead in the XP column. Uh, 26k to Leoric's 17k. And uh, not a big surprise because Murky has been pretty much by himself a lot of this map. Um, level 20s for Calculated Throws. So we do see the Flamethrower. We see the Indestructible for Johanna. Uh, I don't know if it's still Bolt of the Storm. I get Okay, Psionic Shift. But basically Bolt of the Storm. Uh, the yeah. Big Tuna Kahuna for Murky, though. And, uh, and what is that? An Angel Shield of Hope. There we go. So, oh, oh. good night. Good night. That's a three-man uh, buried alive there and doing his best to get on this back line again but guess what murky's dumb so uh tompy's in a bit of trouble murky's about to maybe finish him off but no doesn't actually loses the egg in the process etc stage diving on top of scooterman and wild indestructible was proc cannot make anything out of it and this looks like a march to the core coming out from boogan squad and I think we have a definitive winner on the MVP of game number three, Wreck. Yeah, I think that might be your boy, Mant. What? 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 <laughs> I'm kidding. No, Michael with a fantastic uh, Buried Alive. That was a good job, I have to say. Oh, hey, okay, guess what? <laughs> buried Alive let's again. Let's get one more. <laughs> let's just get one more, Jurgen Derb. There you go. Bye-bye. Uh, core goes bye bye in just a couple of seconds. There it is. GG's being thrown out. Well played, Bugan Squad. Well played. Calculated throw, living up to their name. And I only say that because I know you guys are in chat and you love how uh, how that works out. So you know I wouldn't normally say that, but um, but no, really fantastic job uh, from Bugan Squad in this game three and uh, and game number two really, allowing them to pick up the wins on Towers of Doom and Infernal Shrines. Uh huh. Yeah. I mean, it was actually a great set. Uh, calculated throw had a pretty convincing game one. Uh, I gave Grievant the MVP award there, and then um, I don't know. Game two and three looked a lot more convincing for Bugen Squad. So it's it's kind of funny, right? Like, you can't get down just because you lost the first match or the first round, right? You you can't you can't do it. So uh, I'm glad that uh, Bugen Squad managed to swing it around and bring us to a game three. I uh, didn't really care who won at that point. I have to pretend to be. Uh, unbiased because murky cough hate murky um but yeah no uh, I, I, it's good it's, it was a good work it was uh actually a pretty valiant effort from calculated throw as well so good job guys all around indeed uh just showing some of the stats here 
for the teams. Um, you know, surprising, surprising or not, I don't know. We do see ETC actually out healing Oriole, not by an insignificant amount. Pretty crazy. Uh, yikes. I'm from that, I'm, I'm assuming that was Prog Rock. Let me just double check. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, Prog Rock does some, but it's it's that's a lot. It also counts self healing though. You have to be aware. Yeah, but even still, that's a lot of healing from ETC. Yeah. Or even so, says he has the same hatred towards Chromie. Eh. Chromie's, that's fair. That's fair. Chromie's whatever. Chromie's just yeah. I mean, it's fair, but Chromie's whatever. Murky's just a stupid character and should be removed from the game. But that's just my opinion. Well, and you know what? That look of disgust on your face is a perfect time for me to have brought the uh, camera back to you as you were talking <laughs> about how much you love Murky. Uh, so, Wreck, that's three matches down. We got to see Winston Churchill Manatees. We got to, uh, versus Trump. We got to watch uh, Jailbait and Rush B. And then, of course, now Calculated Throw versus... You got this. I know you know their name. Pugan Squad. I, yeah, I, I was have. the way that you were ticking him off. I was like, "Oh, is he going to jump in?" Um, no. Oh, okay, gotcha. So, <laughs> so yeah. So three matches down. Uh, I've got two more to go, and this is going to be your opportunity to go take a nap because obviously you're falling asleep. And we're going to have Ziltoid come in for the last couple of matches, which are going to be some heroic games. So Ooh, you guys nice. don't want to go anywhere for these. We're going to take uh, a couple of extra minutes here just so I can make sure that we get Ziltoid uh, logged in and set up. And uh, we'll get right into these heroic matches for the rest of the afternoon. So, Psychic, thank you very much for joining us. Is there anything that you would like to tell the masses at home? Guys, thanks all for coming. Thank, thank you all for coming out and watching. Fall half asleep for three hours or so. Uh, it was a lot of fun. No, I had a lot of fun, Aaron. Thank you for having me. Um, you guys can follow me at Psychic. I'm, 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 I'm on Twitch. You can follow me if you want. I play every now and then. Uh... I, you can follow me on Twitter, also Recyclic, which it, I usually it's usually just me complaining. I don't think you want to see that. But yeah, um, I'm around. If you need to ping me in Discord or whatever, I'm around. Let's chat. So yeah, thanks for having me, Arrow. And uh, I'll see you guys in the Nexus. <laughs> All right. Thanks for Psychic. Have a great afternoon. And everybody else, we'll be back in just a moment.